Ahmed Uysal, he's a professor of Middle Eastern Studies at Istanbul University and joins us live from Ankara. Professor, good to see you, good to have you. I just want to talk about what our correspondent Azar Sadawi witnessed uh, about uh, 10 minutes ago, an Israeli airstrike taking place where he is. We saw the airstrike live on our screens. Now, this is an area which is supposedly a safe zone, a designated safe zone by Israel. Uh, tell me what yes. are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, the whole world is watching the massacres by Israel and genocide. And also, the, of course, this is given by the West a uh, free blank check to, to do whatever uh, they wanted to, uh, to do, uh, even given to Israel. And unfortunately, also, they are doing, you know, more than uh, necessary, more than, you know, uh, acceptable. Uh, of course, nothing is ex acceptable, but this is too much. I mean, children and, you know, civilian locations, hospitals, everything. And uh, there is something, you know, uh, uh, very, very suspectable after this, because I think this is, and um, Gazan people are paying the global Western hegemony in, in the region, in American especially, and the Western. And uh, also, they, they forget about the rule of law, human rights, I mean, rules of engagement. Even yesterday, the Blinken said, American uh, State Secretary said, you know, uh, rules of uh, Israeli engagement, you know, what kind of rules they are, you know, they, they, uh, he said that Israel is also a need to be abide by this, uh, their own rule of engagement. I mean, of course, uh, nobody is asking them, you know, uh, and uh, so international pressure is building up and uh, I mean, people are get, getting tired of this conflict. This, uh, I mean, already one way conflict. Know, the, certainly the, the, the international aggressive. pressure is building yes. up and uh, people are getting tired yes. of this conflict. Uh, but it seems to me that uh, the Israeli government is not getting tired of uh, launching bombs on uh, schools hospitals, no, no. UN shelters within Gaza. And we saw an example of uh, that on our screens uh, a few moments ago. So let me ask you, I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but I'll ask it anyway. What would it take for Israel to stop its indiscriminate bomb attacks, airstrikes, ground attacks in Gaza? Yes, I think one, I mean, if it is left to Netanyahu, of course he will not give it up. He, he just tied his, his career, his all 30 years of, uh, you know, legacy that he radicalized the Israeli society as well. And all this legacy is tied uh, to this conflict. And he was uh, ashamed. He was also, uh, you know, was very failure in this uh, 7th of October. And he wanted to prove himself the opposite. And of course, he cannot, but he's insisting on the failing mission and of course the sponsors the sponsors of israel which is firstly america and the west europe and other allies of israel that see israel is protecting their interest in the region they had to uh, give it up they have to see this is hurting the west more than helping because everybody began to hate israel of course but now they began to hate the west with uh, the us uh, blind support to British and other uh, countries' blind support for Israel is also there, uh, I mean, taken or considered as, as guilty in this uh, conflict. And, uh, of course, it depends on the sponsors. If you come to your question, it is uh, if the sponsors uh, uh, stop supporting Israel, Israel is not very powerful, actually. We have seen that before. Uh, without uh, Western support, Israel can do only so much. I mean, from the financial aspect, from the security aspect, from diplomatic, even legal and human, human humanitarian and human uh, human rights law aspect, all these depend on American veto and also diplomatic support for Israel. So uh, the the sponsors should say no, stop. I mean, it is it is enough. I mean, we get tired of this. But they are not doing that. I think, but the build, I mean, the pressure is building up, which is optimistic. Maybe now Egypt uh, can act a little bit more because the elections are over. Sisi maybe is now more comfortable than before. And uh, Turkey is also pressuring the, uh, all sides from east to west. And uh, Muslim also countries should pressure. They should say, you know, either us or Israel. And their interests, of course, are 
bigger with the Muslim world, bigger with the Arab world, and they have to force America to choose the, the right side, not, not the wrong side. But right now, so far, they are not doing that. And Professor, over yes. the past few days, a rather odd development has taken place. Uh, Israel has expressed its willingness for another humanitarian pause or ceasefire, uh, if you will. Now, Hamas's chief is in Egypt for talks. Tell me to what extent do you think uh, Egypt uh, has leverage in this whole situation and what role exactly can Egypt play when it comes to reaching that humanitarian pause or ceasefire? Egypt doesn't have a big role, but they have some role. They don't have, you know, much leverage on Israel. They don't have much leverage on uh, on Palestine, on Hamas. They, they open the Rafah border when Israel allows them. And of course, uh, Hamas people or general uh, Gazan people, they want uh, to be open uh, uh, all the time because there is a huge humanitarian disaster, tragedy inside Gaza, and Egypt is listening to, to Israel mostly. And this is, of course, uh, you know, doesn't uh, please, please uh, Palestinians or uh, anybody in the world. And Egypt can, can do more and should do more, I think, after this, especially the elections are over now. And uh, they have some more freedom uh, against Israel uh, because Israel maybe was, or the West uh, overall was pressuring Egypt to, to do less. Now the pressure, I think, uh, is less than before. So they can, uh, I mean, they have to give something to Hamas to, to accept. Uh, I mean, if Egypt wants to mediate, should be like neutral mediator. So far, they I don't see that, but they can... Of course, they have communications with both sides, and they can play a better role than than the currently happening. In you know, they they can op I mean, open even the humanitarian law. International law allows humanitarian aid, not only just because Israel says so. You know, there is a human America invade. I mean, invaded Iraq on the humanitarian legal basis. I mean, if we accept it, and uh, I mean, Egypt can say. We, there is a humanitarian tragedy and mass suffering. Children are dying. They, they can pressure Israel or they can you know, provide more help or also use this as a leverage for, uh, to pressure Israel to, to come up with a humanitarian pause or a ceasefire maybe uh, in the long run or mid, medium run. Professor Ahmad Uysal, thank you yes. very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time.